I went to one of these big conferences back in 1992, and at that point I had effectively memorized the Course in Miracles. I would show up at groups and I would start speaking passages, whole paragraphs verbatim, and even with quoting page numbers. And I was uh, introduced at this conference uh, in 1992 as a walking Course in Miracles encyclopedia. And uh, I don't know, I didn't like the ring of that somehow. <laughs> you see that as an epitaph on your, your gravestone. Here lies a Course in Miracles walking encyclopedia. This doesn't, doesn't ring very good for me. So that was actually a good moment in my life in 1992 because from that point on I swore not to be an encyclopedia, but to really get into the core of the experience and to really feel it and extend it and radiate it. And so that's been my devotion. And as I was saying last night, I, I feel very honored, like Gary was saying, of being so fortunate to really be able to meet people in a very close and direct and intimate way where you really feel that deep heart connection, like you've known them forever. That's, to me, what this is all about. The words, well, they'll, they come and they go. Uh, the, the books, for years I really, I just traveled around and I really had the experience that the Course was such a great, exquisite tool for me that I could not even imagine writing a book about it, and I, and actually I didn't. I mean, I just continued to travel and speak, and people started transcribing these words. They made the book. <laughs> uh, so, so that's kind of fun for me because I've always thought, you know, this is just an experience, and anything that gets used, I'm all for it. But um, the idea of trying to put things down in form, I like to show movies, I use a lot of music, we do experiential exercises. Somebody was telling me, we had people who were, we had to do an angel bath last year outside, it was very much fun and everything. I'm really into those kind of things, and yet I've also been open to answering thousands and thousands of emails, and that's where a lot of these uh, writings that, get on, that come out into books come from is just from emails and not from uh, me trying to sit down and, and put something down into a book. And I've loved it. I haven't regretted one moment of it. Um, I even take the time occasionally to answer yes on Facebook and MySpace, all those funny little social networking gadgets that they have nowadays. Um, I just feel like whenever I have the opportunity and somebody writes a sincere question that that's just an, an opportunity to extend to myself. And that's how we keep it in awareness, is by giving it away. So to me it's, it's just very precious. So, last night we talked a little bit about um, some topics. Good morning, I'm Alisa. And um, basically that's what I plan to do on these days coming up in these sessions and also in the shared uh, question and answer sessions with Gary, is just make myself fully available to connect with you where your practice is, where your spiritual practice is, seems to be flowing and working, and also if you have points where you feel like they're stuck points. Uh, a woman just wrote an email to me this morning in the early morning hours and just was saying she, she feels kind of a flatness. Uh, she went through a period where she was feeling a lot of joy, but now things are starting to feel kind of flat and meaningless. Like, kind of like, what is the point? It's more feeling more of like a yada, 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 yada. And, and it's like, I don't know what's going on down there in my mind, she said, but, but when I feel this flatness, it doesn't, I don't feel that intense joy, so I really think that there must be something that I need to get in touch with that I'm not aware of. And so that's what I would like to use as a context for our gathering. If there's something that, that you feel like, it doesn't really matter what the emotion is, but if you're not feeling a sense of supreme 
joy and happiness, then that's a good starting point to just say, check. Uh, okay, I really want to take note of what's going on in my awareness, my consciousness, because, because my state of mind is important to me. Because I am worthy of the peace and the joy and the happiness. I am worthy of true freedom. Not the freedom like we talk about living in a free country or financial freedom or those things, but I mean true freedom of mind, like Morpheus talks about in the, the Matrix. I'm trying to free your mind, he tells Neo, and then he jumps across from one, <laughs> one skyscraper to the next. That's really why we're, we're here, is to, to have that freedom. So, I'm very much at your service, and also, uh, I see Helena here, and Jason's here. Uh, we, we're here to, to join with you in that way. And also, if you're pretty new um, to me and to my teachings, um, just as a quick summary, I, I started uh, with the course in 1986, and in 1991, I was guided to just I might say impelled to just start traveling and I was told, you know, pretty much the same thing the apostles were told, take no thought for what you should wear, what you should eat, don't worry about transportation, food, lodging, all the things that seem very practical in this world, but I was told don't worry about them, pay attention, listen, uh, I will provide for you, I will show you the way, and you have to just stay tuned in. That's your job. Stay willing, stay open, stay tuned in. So from 1991 to 1996, I kind of was like Jesus and the Apostles, kind of uh, just floating around, not knowing from day to day where I would be staying, um, not knowing where the meals would come from, just trusting. and. Like I was just sharing earlier, not trying to develop more trust, but just trying to unplug from the ego and put my faith and trust in the Holy Spirit to truly take care of all aspects of my life, not just some aspects, but all aspects. And many of the things that I experienced during those five years have continued today. Instead of just traveling locally or around the, United, the continental United States, now I pretty much seem to go around the world. And so the context has changed a little bit in the sense that instead of getting uh, donations to put gasoline in my little three-cylinder Chevrolet Sprint, uh, now it involves uh, airplanes a lot. And sometimes buses and trains and subways and all kinds of fun things, scooters. But actually, and people can say, well, airplanes, that's a little bit bigger, and yes, with frequent flyer miles and donations that come in from, from gatherings, that's been very helpful for me to just kind of continue on uninterrupted to do what I was doing back in 1991, which was just floating around and meeting people and sharing ideas, sharing a lot of joy. But I really learned that in order to really go for and maintain an experience of, of peace and enlightenment, this idea of reciprocity, of I'll do this for you if you'll do this for me, reciprocity, contracts, and so on and so forth, I really saw that that, was, that really wasn't going to fit with my life and my lifestyle. Uh, that I really had to be trusting in the Holy Spirit for absolutely everything, because as soon as I would make an agreement, a bargain, uh, some kind of something set up in terms of a contractual agreement or whatever, I would see that immediately there were expectations and parameters that were part of that agreement. 